Hello, AP Calculus students, Mr. Meunier here. Today, we're going to introduce Unit 2 and specifically Topic 2.1. Uh, unit 2, as we progress through it, is all about something called the derivative. And we'll find that the derivative is a way that we can find the rate of change, the rate of change, which is another way of saying the slope, the slope of something. So if I see rate of change, I always think about slope, rate of change equals slope. Uh, to get into the rate of change or the slope, uh, the derivative is special because it is the slope or the change at a single point, a single point, uh, which goes against what you've done in previous courses where you needed two points to calculate the slope of a line. Uh, we're going to find the slope of a tangent line today. Tangent line. And what is a tangent line? Well, a tangent line is basically a line that brushes up against a curve. A tangent line is a line that brushes against a curve, skims a curve. It doesn't collide with it. It doesn't hit it. Uh, all of these cases would be tangent lines, how this light blue line is barely skimming up against our black curve. This blue line, I know it goes through it, but at that point, it's just skimming against our curve. And right here, at that point, that's skimming up against the curve. That's, those are all tangent lines, lines that touch a curve at a single point and are brushing up against a curve. Now, there's some misconceptions about a tangent line. Uh, people think tangent line means one point and one point only. Well, in this picture, this thick line L is hitting our thin line in one spot, but it's crossing through it. It's not brushing up against it. So no, that is not a tangent line. In the second one, People think this cannot be a tangent line because it's hitting the curve in several spots. Well, it actually is. This point P is brushing up against a curve. That's a tangent spot. Over here, these that are intersecting, when a line intersects a curve, that's called a secant line. So this thick dark line here is actually partially tangent, but on the other edge here, it's actually a secant line. Tangent line brushes against a curve, secant line intersects a curve in more than one point. Uh, other misconceptions, three here. Three, yeah, three looks like a tangent line maybe to some people because it barely touches the curve, it's hitting the curve in one spot, but it kind of violates that unwritten rule that I say that it brushes up against it. This thick line is jamming into that curve. Um, tangent line needs to skim uh, next to it. So no, that is not a tangent line. And then sometimes people think a tangent line cannot cross through a curve. Well, you can cross a curve like this thick line here is doing, but it needs to skim against the curve. So it's under the curve and over the curve, but it doesn't cut through it completely. It's just skimming across the curve. So yes, that's a tangent line. So the tangent line problem becomes, how do you find the slope using a tangent line? Because again, by definition, what we're talking about with derivatives throughout this unit two we're building up to is the derivative is a slope or a rate of change. So again, rate of change is another way of saying slope. Uh, the abbreviation for slope is the letter M. Uh, you've probably thought of slope being a rise over a run. Well, your rise, the rise variable is always the y variable. The run is the x. 
And if you calculate the slope, you are probably given a formula of y2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So again, to calculate the slope of something, we have always needed two points. And if you have two points, that's called a secant line. Two points is a secant line. So we're going to use this idea of a secant line to try to figure out a one point tangent line. So let's begin. We have an unknown graph of f of x here. Uh, points given to us. That point is at c, and then the y value is f of c. Uh, let's choose another point on the curve that has it that somewhere further along the way. So I'm going to put a point maybe out here on this curve. I'm just going to call this some unknown x point, which means on the curve here, if I plug x in, this would be x, f of x, x and f of x. So we have figured out two points. I can connect these two points with a line. And we can see that's a secant line. It's cutting through the curve. It's not brushing up against it. We can find the slope of this line because I have an x1, the first x, a y1, an x2, and a y2. So what is the slope of this secant line? Well, again, like I have defined up in this corner, the slope is always y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, it's going to be f of x minus f of c over x minus c. That would be the slope or the rate of change of this particular secant line with unknown values. So if we have that, let's do it again, but let's move it closer. So let's say instead of having an x value way out here, let's get closer to it. Maybe cut the distance in half. I'm gonna say x is here, which means the point here would be x, f of x this time. We can still connect those. And if I connect them this time, we still have a secant line. But notice that secant line is not quite as obvious as the one before. There's less white space between my line and the curve. It's getting closer to brushing up against it. But it's still clearly a secant line. Do we still see a secant line? Yes, I do. There's, it's not brushing against it. There's, some, there's a gap in there. Um, I can find the slope of that. I can find the rate of change of the secant line because we still have an x value and a y value and a second x value, and a second y value. So our slope of this secant line, again, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's going to give us f of x minus f of c over x minus c. Is there any difference between this particular slope and the one above? I would say no, it's the exact same formula. We've just moved things closer together, all right? So since we're having so much fun doing this, let's do it one more time. But this time, let's put that, uh, the second value so it's basically almost touching so if this is C, we're going to put X right next to it, right next to it here, which means this other point is going to be X, F of X still. And if I connect these, 
with a secant line, whoops, we're going to get something like that. Do we still see a secant line? Uh, yes, barely. It's almost a tangent line. I have two points. So by definition, it's a secant line, but it's, it's to the naked eye, we almost have a tangent line. A tangent line means there's only one dot. So we can still calculate slopes here where I have an x1, y1, and I have an x, whoops, an x2, y2. So this slope is still going to be f of x minus f of c over x minus c. But now, how could we do this so I get these two dots as close as possible, as close as you can get without actually being one dot? Well, that is what unit one was about. The limit lets you get really close to values without necessarily getting there. So let's say we do this, but instead of just a slope, it's the limit as x approaches c. So what we're saying now is the x number, this x value is getting as close to c as possible. So it basically becomes one dot. So this is saying x gets as close to c as possible. So it is basically one point. There's two spots, X and C, but they're so close, we can't tell the difference. It's like maybe C is at two and X is at 2.0000000000, an infinite number of zeros and a one. That's what this limit lets us do. Put X and C almost on top of each other and then figure out the slope between those two. And the slope between those two points is basically the slope of one point. So this is really the slope of a tangent line. The slope of a tangent line is the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus x f of c over x minus c, which is the definition of a tangent line given up top here. So again, the slope of a tangent line, that means the slope at a single point, which goes against everything you've ever been taught. You always need two points to find a slope. You need two points to find a slope. Now you don't. Calculus says you can find the slope at any individual point as long as you calculate the limit as two points get infinitely infinitesimally close together of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. Now these different pieces, what do they mean? Well, f of x, that's your function. f of c, that's the solution when value is plugged in. And then C, that's the specific value where the tangent line's happening. So what we want to do, find the slope of the graph of f of x equals 2x minus 3 at x equals 1. So I have one dot at x equals 1. What's the slope of this going to be? So the different pieces here, your f of x is 2x minus 3 f of c means take one and plug it in to the problem. So that's f of one, which is two times one minus three, which is a negative one. 
and then that C value is the one. So the slope of a tangent is the limit as X approaches C, F of X minus F of C over X minus C. For this particular problem, it's the limit as X approaches one, F of X is two X minus three minus F of C is negative one over X minus C is one. That's gonna give us the limit as X approaches one, two X, a uh, negative three minus negative one, minus a negative is a positive. So that's gonna be two X minus two over X minus one. This is a limit problem. I would like to plug one into this, but one minus one is zero on top. Two times one minus two is also zero. That's no good. Let's try to factor this. Two comes out, X minus one, X minus one. X minus ones will cancel out now. And we get the limit as X approaches one of just the number two, which equals two. So the slope of the tangent line is two. That makes a lot of sense because this was a line. So MX plus B is a line. Y equals MX plus B and the slope is two. But it was more, a point to prove that this is working. That single point slope of two matches what we say. It's more interesting for non-line problems. So find the slope of a tangent line of f of x equals x squared plus one at the value x equals one. This is not a line, that's a parabola. I wanna know the slope at a single point. Well again, of x equals x squared plus one. F of c is f of one. So that's one squared plus one, which equals two. And c equals one. The slope of the tangent line is the limit as x approaches one of f of x, which is x squared plus one minus f of c, which is two, over x minus the c value, which is one. I clean this up. We're gonna get x squared minus one over x minus one. I can't plug one in because I'm gonna get a zero over zero, but your numerator factors into x plus one, x minus one, over x minus one, x minus one's cancel. We get limit x approaches one of x plus one. Now we can plug the one in, one plus one equals two. So that's telling us the slope of the tangent line is gonna be two. And if you look at a curve of this, get rid of this. And I enter the equation that we had, x squared plus one. It's a parabola. And we just said at x equals one, which would be right in here. That's x equals one. We said the tangent line brushing up against that. If I brush up against the curve, the slope is two. It means it's rising and running. Rise two, run one. Rise two, one, one. Run one. I can believe that. But we didn't have two points. We didn't calculate the slope between two pieces. It was just the one particular spot, which is what calculus becomes. Derivatives here in the future are gonna be, how do you find the slope at one spot? All right. Oops. Uh, prime notation. You're going to see a lot of this now. Um, this type, F with that apostrophe, F apostrophe C is red, F prime of C. 
that means the slope of the tangent line at C. F prime of C means the slope of the tangent line. So you don't put M of tangent. That is also called the derivative. F prime is called the derivative. The derivative of the problem is the slope of the tangent line. Derivative is slope of tangent line. F prime means slope of tangent line. That means the derivative. And finally, kind of this multiple choice thought problem. If F is a function for which limit X approaches negative two of F of X minus F of two all over, or F of negative two or X plus two equals zero, which of the following must be true? We need to recognize when I see this type of problem, this is the slope of the tangent line, which means this is a derivative. Derivative. Mm -hmm. And they're telling us the slope of the tangent line equals zero in this case. So A, X equals negative two is a vertical asymptote of the graph. Well, no, because this is not talking about the graph. This problem is talking about the slope of a tangent line. So no, limit here is a slope. It's not a graph problem. Uh, the function f is continuous at x equals two. Two has nothing to do with this problem. Everything here is about negative two. Negative two is what's going on. Negative two is what's going on. So x equals two is not relevant to the problem. The derivative of f exists at the derivative of f at x equals negative two exists. Well, yeah, this is the derivative at x equals negative two. We have an answer of zero. So yeah, it does exist. Yes, it's gonna equal zero. So C is the answer here. Uh, f is not defined at x equals negative two. Well, again, we have an answer of zero. So we must be defined had a solution come out of it. All right, guys. So again, that's a little intro, finding the slope of a tangent line, a powerful idea, finding the slope of a single point. Um, hope everybody's doing well. See you soon.